Hey, have you ever used Make to keep track of your dependencies in a data analysis pipeline? It's my go-to tool for ensuring the reproducibility of my analysis. If you've been following along past episodes of Code Club, you've seen that I've been using Make to describe recipes for creating intermediate files in my analysis. What we've done so far has been pretty basic. Stay tuned though, because in today's episode, we're gonna take it up a notch. Hey folks, I'm Pat Schloss, and this is Code Club. In each episode of Code Club, I present various concepts that I use in my own research to improve the reproducibility of the analysis. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know when the next episode is released. Two big concepts in making data analyses reproducible are keeping your code dry and automation. Don't know what dry code is? Don't repeat yourself. In the last episode, we created a shell script to create Amplicon sequence variants, or ASVs, for different regions and distance thresholds. The script was smart enough to figure out the region and the threshold from the name of the file we asked it to produce. That file is also called the target. But the problem is that we may end up wanting to run that code 50 times. Are we going to copy the same make recipe 50 times, changing the target each time? No, that wouldn't be dry. Today we'll see how we can create the names of the 50 or whatever target files and then tell the same recipe to create each of those 50 files. But to pull this off, we'll first have to learn a few concepts in make. We'll learn how to create variables. Then we'll learn how to use functions in make to do things like extract the path from the variables or the file names that are stored in the variables. Then we'll also learn how to loop over a ve vector of values. Finally, we'll see how we can use this list with the recipe we created in the last episode to automatically create all 50 files with a simple call to make from the command line. But don't worry, we'll go slow, and in the end, all of these new tools will allow us to show off the automation powers of make and its ability to keep track of the dependencies for the 50 files. That's where its power for reproducible analysis will really shine. Hopefully you've already gathered from this intro that even if you don't know what an ASV or a 16S RNA gene is, you'll still get a lot out of this video. Never heard of make either? No problem. Give this episode a view and I'm sure you'll have yourself thinking it needs to be the framework for your next data analysis pipeline. Alrighty, let's go into our project root directory. It's green, we're in good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Atom and we're only gonna be working with the make file today. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And at the very top, I'm going to put in um, a special target that we'll call print under uh, hyphen percent. Uh, so that's gonna be the, the target. And as we've seen before, if I were to say print hyphen and then something, that something is gonna be the value of the percent sign. Now, something we haven't seen before is the echo function from make. And so if I do at echo and then quote dollar sign uh, star equals dollar sign parentheses dollar sign star. Um, don't worry about what all this means. Uh, we've seen before that the target value would be a dollar sign at. Well, if I want the value of what's in this percent sign, what's matching that wild card, that is the dollar sign star. Um, and so what we're doing here is saying, give me the value of that wild card. And then this is saying, well, give me the value that the wild card represents. And to demonstrate that, let me do test equals um, howdy. Okay. And so now if I come back and I do make print hyphen test, should say test equals howdy, right? Howdy. So um, we're not going to say test equals howdy. Instead, we're going to come back down to the bottom or towards the bottom of our workflow here. All of these are our various different recipes. And you'll see here that I have a recipe for building my ESVs for the different regions. And so here the percent sign is matching those different uh, regions. And then down here, we have a similar one for the ASVs where we have the percent sign to represent the region and the 0, 01 to represent the threshold of 0 0.01, okay? So we're gonna turn both of these into variables. We're gonna generate all possible values using those variables, okay? And so that's what we're gonna to do today. Where I'm gonna start is with this target, data percent RNDB ESV count tibble. That percent is doing the work of the four different regions that I have in my data set, right? I can copy this four times 
And for each, I can give a different region. 3, 4, V4, 5, and V19. And I can put these on the same line separated by space. And I can call these my ESV tibbles equals that. So now if I do make print ESV tibbles, then I get those four different tibbles. Now, if I wanted to add a fifth region, um, I would concatenate on another path. This gets a little bit tedious. This certainly works. Um, and the way I would run this um, is that I could replace this target here with a percent sign and then inside parentheses, the name of the variable. Uh, so ESV tibbles. And so this then represents all those four ESV tibbles, right? And so if I were to grab, uh, say this one and do make n this, um, uh, it's complaining about code get esv.r, should be esvs.r. So I'll save that. Okay, so then it knows to run those. But the problem that we see um, is that if we look back at our rule here, um, it is dependent on uh, this file, which still has a percent sign in there, right? It was matching the percent sign that was in our target. So those are two problems. Um, Again, if I have to add another region, then I have to add another target and that can get kind of tedious. And we need a way to get the region or the directory name from our file. So to get this to work, um, let's go ahead and first deal with this problem of the percent sign not representing the region that we're interested in, okay? So to do that, what we like to do is that there is a, um, a rule uh, or target rather called second expansion. And it doesn't take any um, prerequisites. And I'm actually gonna cut this and put this back up here at the very top with my secondary rule. And what this allows us to do is to use some special functions in our list of prerequisites, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're going to replace the data forward slash percent forward slash with a special function called dir. And that's gonna get the directory of our target. And so you'll notice that down here when we had the special functions, uh, special variable uh, dollar sign at, we used a single dollar sign. Well, in the list of prerequisites, if we're gonna use these variables or use these functions, we need to use a double um, dollar sign. And that's why we are using that secondary expansion uh, call, okay? So again, what this will do is this will extract the directory information from my ESV tibble. So it's gonna basically take this value out and then append at the end of it, RNDB count table. All right, so let's give this another shot. And we now see that sure enough, if I do make data three, four, RNDB, ESV count tibble, sure enough, it gets the directory right and we're in good shape, okay? So again, what we've seen here is that we can use special functions that come with make to extract different parts of the path. And so here we're getting the directory path of the name of our target, which is great. And the other thing we're seeing is that uh, if we're using these functions or using variables in the list of prerequisites, we need that double dollar sign. And as we saw, and I put it at the very top, we need the second expansion target um, to be called before we do the secondary expansion. Um, basically what's happening, is kind of like what we saw previously for that print function, is that the dollar sign at gives you the name of the target, and then this gives you uh, the, the value itself, right? So it's, it's kind of doing two layers of expansion of the name. Um, if that doesn't make sense to you, then if it's in the prerequisites, you need two dollar signs, if it's down here in the recipe for the rule, you need a single dollar sign. Okay, great. So that solved the problem um, of the path in our prerequisites. Now let's deal with this beast where we've got four targets and we can imagine down the road, maybe we would want a fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth target um, adding things on. So what we can do is I'm going to create um, ESV tibbles temp as a way to try something out. And uh, I'm also gonna create something called regions, 
which is going to be a variable, like I had ESV tibbles, that contains the names of my different regions. So v4, v34, v45, v19. Um, and again, I can do make uh, print regions, and it'll output my four regions. So that looks great. And what I'm going to do is we're going to use a for each function. So it's like dir in that it's a function. And we can call that with a dollar sign parentheses for each. And the syntax for the for each is going to be the variable name, comma, uh, the vector, so like regions. And then basically after the comma, what uh, to do uh, with of our name. Okay. So again, this is the general syntax. So we'll do ESV tibbles temp equals dollar sign that for each. And then I'm going to use a capital R to indicate regions. And the vector that we're going to iterate over is going to be dollar sign parentheses regions. And then we need to think about what we want to do with that, right? Um, and so again, we're taking all those values of the regions, those four values, and each time we go through this loop, each time we go through this, these steps, uh, the first time through R is going to have the value of V4, the second time 3, 4, the third time V4, 5, the fourth time V1, 9. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to build a path. So we can do data forward slash dollar sign R um, forward slash um, this, right? ES, RNDB, ESV, count tibble, and that should work. Now, um, something to note is that I could certainly put R in parentheses with a dollar sign. The dollar sign um, uses either what's in the parentheses or the first character of the variable name. Um, I'll leave it like this so it's more clear as you're thinking about um, how you might des design and use your own variables. So let me go ahead and copy this variable name. And now if I do make print hyphen ESV tibbles temp, I now see I get my four paths back, right? And so this is really nice because what, what I can do is if I were to say add another region, which might be say uh, V35, right? Now I change that one thing, adding V35 to the regions vector and bam, now I have the target for the V35. So that's excellent, right? So I'm going to... Um, use that name for ESV tibbles. And I'll go ahead and get rid of this thing up here. And you know what? Um, I'm going to leave that there for now. This looks good. And again, I can do make dash n um, this v35 one. And let's see, did I remove that? There we go. I think I forgot to, to save the output or something. Um, you can see that if we want to add a region, then we could run everything through. Uh, so this would probably throw an error because you might recall that extract regions.sh has an if statement in there that looks for the region to figure out which, which coordinates to use to extract that region from the gene. So I'm going to go ahead for now and remove that v35, save it. But of course, you know, if I could do v19 instead, I see the commands that it's going to run to build that for me. The other thing that we talked about previously was that we can create these phony rules, right? And so I can say um, ESVs as a target, and the prerequisites for ESVs is going to be ESV tibbles, right? And so can I save that? And if I do make dash n ESVs, this is going to show me all the commands I need to run to build those ESV files. So that's really nice, right? I can generate these four files running a simple make function. Great. So I'm going to save running this for now. And I want to turn my attention now um, to think, you know, and we'll skip um, over this processed file. And I'm actually going to move this down below because in a future episode, we're going to think about how we can combine both the ASV and ESV data. But again, uh, that's for another day. So this all looks good. But in this case with the ASVs, I have both the region as well as the threshold. And so I'm going to create another variable that I'll call thresholds. I'm going to use values, say, 001. So that's going to be 1 in 1,000. So if that's like a 
full length sequence, that's going to be one and a half differences, base differences. I'll do 02, 03, 04, 05. Um, let's do 08, 01, 015, 02. Let's do 025, 03, 04. 05, right? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different thresholds. I don't know that I need all these. I might need more. I might diff need different ones, but I've got them there. Um, and so the nice thing, instead of having to make, like I said earlier, 50 different targets or so, or 60 or whatever it is, um, I can, you'll, you'll see that I can do the same type of thing we did with ESVs, but for ASVs to build all those targets for those different thresholds and the different regions. But we first have to figure out how to make ASV's tibble, right? And so what we will do is that we want to create ASV tibbles. And I'm going to go ahead and for now, I'm going to copy this down and we'll say equals that. And so we've got our regions, but I need a second for loop in here. And so we'll do dollar sign parentheses for each. And then we will do uh, T comma dollar sign uh, parentheses thresholds good and then inside this parentheses I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back up in and instead of ESV I'm gonna do dollar sign T and I want to make sure that I've got the right parentheses so I've got one two open one still open two's open three's open two's open three's open two one zero so I think I've got the right number of parentheses. I can test this now by doing make print hyphen ASV tibbles. And that worked, right? And so you can see that we've got uh, the V4 with the 001. We've got V19 out to 05. Okay, so awesome. So again, we can bring that in here as a replacement for our target. So anything that is contained in this vector will get built using this these prerequisites and this rule. We also see, of course, that we have um, uh, the path. And so like we did above, we can do dollar sign, dollar sign, dir, dollar sign, dollar sign, at. Um, and we're going to get rid of that extra forward slash. And we'll do the same thing right over here for count table. And let's test this. And if we do make dash n on this v19 count table file, we see the three things that need to get run to build that file. Excellent. Now, again, uh, I can create, say, ASVs um, as a target, phony target, uh, made by ASV tibbles as the prerequisite. And so if I were to do make dash n ASVs, we see everything that gets run. And the cool thing about make is that, um, you know, it's going to run the get unique seeks get ASVs uh, for those different regions. And then um, it will go ahead and generate the count tibbles for those different thresholds. If it needs to build a distance matrix, it does that once because that's the prerequisite for everything else. And it make is so good because it keeps track of all of our prerequisites for us. And I can build out all of these output files with a very simple command from the command prompt. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, another variable called a e or maybe e a s v tibbles, and that's going to be all of the exact and amplicon sequence variants, and we'll then say equals dollar sign e s v uh, tibbles, and what we can then add on this other variable. So we're going to concatenate two uh, vectors together, two variables together. Right. And if I, I'm going to go ahead and remove these phony targets for now. And I can do um, E ASV as a phony target. And the prerequisite is the E ASV tibbles. Good. And again, if I do make dash N um, E ASV, I see everything that's going to run to build out all those targets, our ESVs, as well as all of the ASVs. And again, it keeps track of the prerequisites and it only runs the commands it needs to build those prerequisites. 
which is really, really slick. So I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to move these variables to the top of my make file. I like to have those up top uh, because um, say I added a region, um, then I'd want that region to be available throughout the whole script. Same for the thresholds and everything else. So that all looks good. And I'm excited about this. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this comment for now. Um, and this is good. And yeah. So, and then again, like I said, next time we'll come back and think about how we can pool all those tables together using these various dependencies. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that dash N and build out my EASVs. It's probably going to take a while to run. Um, I'll do some editing to speed things up a bit. But while this is running, why don't you go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell icon so you know when the next episode is released so you can hear the exciting conclusion of what we do uh, with all these countable files. All right, that took about five hours to run on my computer. Not trivial, but at the same time, we did all of that with one simple command, make EASV, right? And so it went back through our whole pipeline, figured out what needed to be done, and then did it. So two things to note. So first of all, um, if you dig into the documentation for make, there is an argument, I believe it's uh, dash J, that you can then put in the number of processors you wanna use to parallelize the process. Um, the other thing, um, that what I've just shown you with make EASV is really powerful for those of you that are working on a high performance computer cluster or um, like what I just did, right? Where it was a job that was gonna take five hours to run. And so the reason why it's good for people on a high performance computer cluster is because they generally don't want you running commands directly from the prompt like we have been because I'm working on my laptop, right? So you're typically submitting what are called jobs where you perhaps have a command like me make EISV, you, you fire it off and then it runs in the background effectively and then lets you know when it's done, right? So um, again, it's useful for those cases. So um, what I would encourage you to do is if you look back at our make file, there are some other targets that we have made through here um, to think about, you know, how could you make a target or set of targets to create the distance matrices? Right? We don't have to do this because we're using that wildcard percent sign. Um, you might also think ahead down to um, this rule where we created the consolidated count tibble file. Um, how could you perhaps simplify the list of arguments to um, use a variable, right? So give those a look and, and think about those. And in the next episode, we're gonna work on this rule here to think about how we can coalesce all together our account tibble files from our EASVs, or from our ESVs, as well as our ASVs. So keep practicing. Please tell your friends about Code Club, and we'll see you next time for the next episode.